Okay, Friday the 5th of April 2024. So, Bitcoin's use case. What's Bitcoin for? What's it used for? And intrinsic value. So, before I forget, the three main things. Increasing your wealth, as in the purchasing power. Hedge against inflation. We can expand upon that. And the intrinsic value, the intrinsic worth of Bitcoin. Let's expand upon that as well. So, one thing at a time. So, Bitcoin, as a form of pure money, its use case is... You can buy things with it. It's a decentralized kind of money that you own, you can spend, decentralized, fixed supply, apolitical, a pure form of money that's 10 times better than anything else already existing. And we'll come back to that as well, 10 times, 10 times better. Not just minimally here and there, just, just different, but a little different, no. 10 times different, 10 times more unique. And we can turn that through collateral or selling it or whatever else into food, into free time into nice things into whatever we can buy things with it that's his uk use case because leads on to the second thing it's a hedge against inflation because bitcoin's use case is protecting your purchasing power because it's a hedge against inflation now there's that interesting meme where the, with the brain like a brain here and some light a brain here you know light and another quote you know each one's more profound than the next and there's a third brain that's even more light and there's a more profound quote, and there's a third and a fourth brain with like, you know, the whole universe and another more profound quote or something. So it seems to be that, that first, using the meme, following the meme, the first one is Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation. It protects your purchasing power. Okay, so it increases your wealth, it protects your savings into the future. The second thing would be Bitcoin is a hedge against debasement. Okay, in terms of money printing, QE, fractional reserve lending, whatever else. Against what's a nice word, chicanery, you know, all sorts of trickery, you know, all sorts of uh, man behind the curtain, Wizard of Oz kind of stuff, all kinds of, you know, financial wizardry, let's say, or, or charades or, or fraud, whatever behind the scene. Because Bitcoin can't really be hypothecated or rehypothecated, but that's another conversation. So hedge against inflation, hedge against debasement, but the third one is hedge against entropy and there's what comes to mind is that meme where that man is like whoa the whole universe that this guy and the whole all that stuff's happening so it's a hedge against entropy meaning because bitcoin in its purest form is mathematics physics computer science open source code we'll come back to that as well it doesn't entropy meaning it doesn't rot it doesn't degrade numbers mathematics doesn't degrade multiplication table does not degrade. The number seven does not rot. The physical forms of it, you know, like a hard drive or computers, which house those kind of numbers per se, with the binary codes and the programming and all the rest, that might degrade, but maths itself doesn't degrade. By definition, it's, it's ephemeral, it's eternal, it's timeless. Maths is maths. And that's, when you boil it down, that's what Bitcoin ultimately is, mathematics. Okay, so therefore, it's a hedge against entropy. So what does that mean practically? It means that one Bitcoin today is worth one Bitcoin tomorrow. And then well, one Bitcoin is worth more, uh, worth the same in the future, no matter where or when, it's the same. Now, the fiat value of it, the value in pounds or dollars can change. And this, But then that's in the fiat world, Bitcoin is still Bitcoin. There's a nice meme, TikTok next block. It's, it's just maps. So the fiat value will go up and down because the dynamics, the fundamentals, greed and fear, whatever else, by all means. But notice, and this is why I say hedge against inflation and a store of purchasing power, when you zoom out, where does the Bitcoin chart go? Where does it go? What direction does the price go? If you go onto Google and type, you know, BTC to USD, TO to USD, and then you click on max, there's that little chart that Google gives you. Click on max. Which way does the Bitcoin price go? You tell me. Okay. So about a few days ago, I saw an interesting tweet by Peter Schiff. Okay. And he said, oh, so far in Q2 2024, gold has done this. Silver has done this. And Bitcoin has done that. And the, the flaw with that is you're thinking too short term. Oh, it's gone down over the past five minutes or the past five days. Yes, but on the long term, where does the price go? You tell me. 
You look at the chart, you tell me, comment below, whatever. So that shows that over the long time, it's a hedge against inflation by definition. Now, what that also means is hedge against debasement because it's a black hole of money. About 10 or so, eight years ago, there was a lot of talk that Bitcoin's a black hole of money where all the money printed in the world is going to go into Bitcoin and it's just going to suck up all that liquidity because it's got a fixed supply. Therefore, the price of Bitcoin can only go one way. OK, now, hedge against entropy. What does that mean? That means as the as the wider world, let's say, deteriorates in terms of inflation and effect shrinkflation, and other things like that are deteriorating, so to speak, the lifestyle, your purchasing power going down, which is what fiat does, mathematically stable, but guaranteed to go down. And, you know, Bitcoin, mm, is it the opposite? Maybe it's the opposite. I don't know. Is it the opposite? You tell me. Is it the opposite? I don't know. But which way does the price go? Mm, OK, now, it's a, it's a hedge against entropy because as everything else deteriorates, the maths is still the same. Bitcoin is still Bitcoin. The code doesn't change. What that means is, as I said earlier, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. So mathematically, it's going to be the same. So you, one Bitcoin today will be one Bitcoin in the future. It might change in terms of fiat value. That's different. That's the emotions, greed, fear, market fundamentals, the halvening, you know, you know the rest, whatever else. Insert buzzword here. You know, shorts or short squeezed or ETFs or all sorts of other things happening or increased demand, bull markets, bear markets, buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. But one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. Therefore, as the world deteriorates, you know, as the wheels go off the cart, it's still the same. Still mathematically the same. That's the key point there. Mathematically the same. It's pure code. It's pure maths. And code is maths and physics is maths and all the rest. And this, again, these are the brain things where you think it's just maths. It's a hedge against entropy. A hedge against entropy. That's powerful. That's very profound. This goes into what Saylor says, or has said in some of his podcasts, where Bitcoin is thermodynamically sound money. Okay. Hedge against entropy. Everything's deteriorating, but Bitcoin isn't because it's pure maths. Now, that brings me on to... Um, um, the intrinsic value of Bitcoin. Intrinsic value of Bitcoin. Now, I used to think that Bitcoin was, the intrinsic value was open source code. In this digital world we live in, digital being the key word there, everything is computerized, everything is software. Everything is software. SaaS, there's a whole industry around that called SaaS, software as a service. Everything's a software. The phone, everything is a phone, on the phone is software. Everything on the computer is software. Driving, even computers use software. Everything, you'd be hard pressed to find something that does not use software. Supply chains use software. It's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Now, I was there, I used to think it's open source code. Therefore, people can do stuff with it that Bitcoin doesn't do and create other co other other coins, other, other projects, whatever else, and create the altcoin market. And I used to believe that, but as... People didn't really say that at all, like very rarely, if ever. So I thought, well, fundamentally, I'm probably wrong, but it makes sense. But that argument, I'd say, is, is, is not something I tend to lead with, but it's still valid because if you're going to be very, if you're going to be very reductionist, the intrinsic value is it's open source code and the world lives on software. So people can take that code and do stuff, other with, do other things with it. Makes sense. Makes logical sense. But also, I tend, I tend to think now that the need to, for something to have intrinsic value is a bit of a fallacy. Because remember when I said earlier, Bitcoin is 10 times better than anything else out there. It's 10 times better because it's money you can own, money you can spend, apolitical, decentralized, with a fixed supply. Okay, it's rare internet money. That is completely different and 10 times better than anything else out there in the market. Any. I don't know, Venmo, PayPal, whatever else, or pound, dollars, euros, Australian dollars, Swiss franc, you, you get on the list, it's better than all of them, because the principle here is, why work for a money, pounds and dollars, that can be printed for free by anyone, as in like the banks or the governments? Why spend your life, your hours, working at a job, mining fiat, spending time, which is proof of work and energy, for a money that can be printed at will. Okay, so therefore we know that Bitcoin is 10 times better because it's the scarce supply, fixed supply. So my thought process now is it doesn't need to have an intrinsic value. Well, why would it need to? 
two main reasons. One, it muddies the water, and two, something is ten times better. So imagine this little analogy. There's a chair, a chair, that the, the benefits, the cool things, the advantages, advantages are this, 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 this. All these cool, amazing features. But the one disadvantage is it comes in red only. It only comes in red. But it has all these amazing features. But only comes in red. You're going to think, who cares? That's amazing. The, the, um, risk, the payoff, the risk reward ratio is way skewed to this. So that all the advantages of this chair just purely outweighs the one disadvantage of it only comes in red. Who cares? It can do all these amazing, cool, futuristic, fancy, nice things. But who cares if it only comes in red? Because it does all these amazing things. But the one bad thing is it comes in red. So the same principle could be applied to Bitcoin. It does all these amazing things. Money you can own, money you can spend, apolitical, defl uh, well, yeah, deflationary, fixed supply, and uh, decentralized. But the one thing is you, you can't hold it in your hand. But actually, you can. If you can remember 12 words, you can kind of hold it in your hand. Indirectly, in a, in a way, but oh, you can't touch it. You can't use it to build a house with. Oh, you can't feed your family with it. You can't burn it like feet or pound or dollars. You can't burn it and heat your house. Well, no, but it does all these amazing things. Like who cares if it hasn't got intrinsic use per se? Who cares? And again, if you want to be really reductionist, it's open source code, so you can do stuff with it. That's called the altcoin market, but that's another conversation. But then again, what did I say earlier? It's pure money. Therefore, I can spend it or use its collateral on the loan and, and buy stuff with it. Because think practically, if I've got Bitcoin, if I have Bitcoin, if, how do I turn it into bread? How do I eat? Because there's no point in having all the Bitcoin in the world if I'm starving and I'm, I'm just starving myself. I'm not spending the coins to buy food to survive a week. What's the point in that? Especially if you've got no um, inheritance plan, so you die a, a preventable death, you starve yourself to death, just sell some coins and eat. See what I mean? Um, but I can, can I can sell it. Now this brings the other point: it's muddying the water. So by it not having an intrinsic use case, it's not not having it's not going to the market price, the market function is not going to be skewed towards a uh, an industrial use. So there's this talk now in the Bitcoin space that Bitcoin is going to demonetize gold and silver. It, arguably. Yeah, OK, it's going to demonetize, let's say. And then they say, oh, it's going to demonetize property, real estate. It's going to actually make houses affordable. It's going to demonetize other assets, because why would people why would people own those assets when it's this instead? So the idea is, let's say the price of gold, it's what, 2,200 US dollars now. Let's say it's this, the price, the spot price. But this much is the utility price. This This much of the supply of gold or the price of gold is used towards industrial use. The rest of that price difference comes from the spot price premium, the buying it to store your wealth. If minority of its use cases is you, the minority of the time it's used in um, industry, but the vast majority is used as a store of value, um, people are going to realize that Bitcoin is better. So why would they sell? Why would they hold gold when this is a for, superior form of savings? Because it's 10 times better. Why would they bother? The factories and manufacturers, yeah, they're going to continue using it because it's, you know, it's intrinsic properties like ductile, you know, uh, conduct electricity, malleable, blah, 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 all the uh, metallurgy concepts. But the rest is like, well, why would I hold this when this is better? It's 10 times better. I'm not. Or look at the gains I've lost over the past 5, 10, 20 odd years, you know, into the future. Well, well obviously, I'm... who knows? They do whatever they want. They will do whatever they want. So the fact that it hasn't got an, an overtly obvious a blindingly obvious intrinsic um, use case is actually the reason why it's powerful. It's actually a good thing because it then means that it's a pure form of money, as I said earlier in the video, which means that people aren't going to get it mixed up with, oh, we can use it in manufacturing, oh, we can use it in your dent, use it in your teeth, oh, we can we can make, you know, we use it in your phones and whatever else or whatever, anything else. Or we can sprinkle it in, in food and have gold dusted food or whatever else we can sell for a thousand dollars a plate, you know, whatever. No, it's pure money. That means there's no distractions. It just is. It's a form of money. About two or so, maybe three years ago, there was a lot, a lot of talk that Bitcoin is pristine collateral. 
pristine collateral, meaning it's a beautiful form, uh, a beautiful asset that people can use to borrow against because it's highly liquid. You can move in and out of Bitcoin in seconds and, it, and it's a 24 seven market, meaning it never closes, meaning at any time of the day or any time zone you're interacting with, you can get a loan just like that. Use as, use as collateral. Okay. And, this, and that adds that feature, you know, all these other features here, you know, 24 seven, very liquid market, because other assets, you know, um, stocks and shares or real estate, how liquid is that? How easy is it to go from owning a property, like literally a house and having the cash in your hand or the cash in the bank account? It, you know, it takes, you need to do this and that. And, uh, and then with shares, you know, there's T plus one, T plus two, T plus three on the third day, it's settled and goes to the clearing banks and all the rest. But Bitcoin is like that. You could argue that it takes 10, 10 minutes to one hour, depending on how big the transaction is and how many confirmations you want for your transaction to be confirmed and, and solid, solidified in the blockchain. Six transactions plus beyond that law diminishing returns. So you could say it, it, it doesn't need an intrinsic value and it's best not to have an intrinsic value. If, it, you, know, if you want fuel to, to heat in a fireplace, you buy coal, you buy wood. You're not going to use dollars. You wouldn't use that. It's like, likewise, if I'm got, I need clothing, you know, I'm not going to stitch together dollar, um, dollar, dollar notes. I'm going to buy cotton or shirts. I want to buy cotton shirts. It's like let things be special as that, specialized. Let the gold be used in dentistry, manufacturing. Let plastics be used in, you know, plastics, no, no fossil fuels, whatever. Cotton in this, and metal and copper and you know, cotton, whatever else. Let those things specialize. You don't, you don't try and use them as money. You don't try and think, oh, oh we should use cotton. Well, cotton is money because it's, it's a much less, it's a much less powerful of a, of a form of money compared to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's way up here, but cotton, it's, it's down there. It, it rots and it's not very, not very portable, you name it. But Bitcoin is, it has all these other features. So you could say intrinsic value, it doesn't really, you could argue, as I said, open source code, if we're being reductionist. But that goes into the altcoin market, you know, altcoin space, which some people wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily agree with me. But then it doesn't need an intrinsic value as a feature, because if it did have one, it'd be, it, would muddy, it would muddy the whole thing. It's like, again, like I've got a cotton shirt, but, you know, what do we not use clothes? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like... Um, it's like you've got a cotton shirt that you're using as a carrier bag. It just, it's just a mismatch. It's like, yeah, you can, but it's not the proper use. The proper use of Bitcoin is a form of money. Again, money you can own, money you could spend, apolitical, decentralized with a fixed supply. It's, it's rare internet money. Powerful. So how cool is that? Hedge against inflation, hedge against debasement, hedge against entropy. One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. You know, uh, TikTok next block. Um, preserves your purchasing power over time because of its scarce properties, 21 million. And um, it's got, um, in its use case, its intrinsic value. If you're not going to consider its open source, open source code, open source software, it hasn't got one because it's 10 times better. So if it's missing one thing, intrinsic value, who cares? It does all these amazing stuff. It doesn't do this. Who cares? And it's 10 times better than the competition. So... What's the problem? And you can use it to buy things. You know, use it as collateral, sell it, borrow against it, you know, whatever else. Get a, you know, there, there are Bitcoin credit cards out there. There are Bitcoin um, debit cards out there. So there are ways. Things like that. So otherwise, you will see me tomorrow.